Welcome into this week's episode of TPI Talk Nightly Weekly News Edition. I'm Lizzie Arbogast, a sports editor here at Talapusa Publishers, alongside managing editor Santana Wood. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be back. You know, we've got a action-packed show for you guys. Lots of good information. We're going to go over some school updates from Talapusa County and Alexander City. Uh, also hear about some something safe and fun to do outdoors starting this weekend. Um, also a lot over in Elmore County as well. We're also going to wrap up the night with some sports updates. Going to get a look at um, Wetumpka's multi-million dollar stadium project, the progress on that, and also hear about how football is back, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, so we're very excited. Definitely want to bring you guys, you know, a ton of local news. Um, obviously, we do still want to talk about, um, you know, the coronavirus a little bit, you know, but there is still a lot more going on, you know, especially with things reopening. But we do want to talk a little bit about those numbers, especially to give you guys an idea of just how much the case numbers are increasing over just the course of one week. Yeah, so um, in comparison with last week, of course, the cases have grown locally and statewide as well. Um, statewide, the cases have topped 16,000, now at 16,032 confirmed cases. Um, and that's an increase of nearly 3,000 since last Wednesday, an increase of 2,990. Yeah, and locally, uh, Tallapoosa County is now at 410 cases, which is an increase of 31 Coosa County at four, 34 cases, and Elmer County actually is seeing quite a bit of a jump now at 300 cases. Um, that's an increase of 74 new cases um, in just a week, and you're seeing those graphs here, and Elmer County is that blue line, which obviously you can see has had quite a few uh, larger spikes um, than I'm sure anyone wants to see over the last several uh, days, for sure. Yeah, so Elmore County has seen quite the increase, Tallapoosa County as well. Um, Coosa County really has stayed pretty stagnant for quite a while. Um, Tallapoosa County has actually the ninth most cases in the state um, confirmed, while Elmore County is not far behind at 13th most cases in the state. Yeah, Tallapoosa County also has the third most deaths uh, in the state, COVID-related deaths at 63. Um, and I was actually looking at uh, Johns Hopkins information this morning, and it does, Tallapoosa County does have the highest uh, death rate in terms of the number of cases there are versus the death. There's actually 15% of positive cases um, have resulted in death. So uh, that's certainly scary to see. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's a total of 581 deaths in the state since the beginning of the coronavirus, COVID-19 related deaths. And, um, you know, at TPI, we just really want to continue to encourage um, social distancing. Don't let that stuff go out the window. Um, wear your mask. It's really to protect others, first and foremost. Um, just a simple thing that you can do. Um, continue to take all those guidelines seriously. Yeah, and especially with things opening up, you know, it's that much more important to remember, like, hey, let's take these guidelines seriously. You know, most of the news that we're going to get into here after the break um, is about a lot of things, you know, starting to kind of get back to normal or at least trying to. Um, but still, those precautions are extremely important. So we're going to take a quick break and then we will dig into uh, Tallapoosa County news, Elmer County news, as well as some sports for you guys. Right, we are. welcome back. I'm Lizzie Arbogast, sports editor here at Tallapoosa Publishers, alongside managing editor Santana Wood, and we want to dig into a ton of local news here for you for you guys this evening. I uh, want to definitely start out with obviously, um, you know, Governor Kay Ivey started to open things back up. This Alabama State Department of Education has said that schools can reopen on Monday, starting Monday. So uh, the superintendents here in Tallapoosa County and Alexander City are really working on plans for, for what that's going to look like. 
Yeah, so we got an update from each of those school systems. Um, Tallapoosa County Superintendent Joe Wendell um, is planning a four pay four phase approach um, and he believes that some of those CDC guidelines that are recommended are feasible but many of them are unrealistic. Um, Alexander City Superintendent Keith Langford felt the same that many of those are unrealistic such as you know being able to socially distance on a bus very very difficult um, especially when the bus fleet is limited. Um, so Scheduled to return for August 21st with no fall break for Tallapoosa County schools and many of those Tallapoosa County employees will be returning to work June 1st as well. Yeah, and the Alexander City Schools have actually pushed back their start date looking to start on August 20th, um, which is a two-week increase of the summer. Um, you know, that's just a, another chance, some extra time for them to prepare for virtual learning opportunities, uh, things like that. Um, because a lot of those CDC guidelines are pretty strict. And who knows what they're going to look like also in August. Um, you know, things things probably will, the way they've been going, probably will change by then. Um, but it's better, obviously, to, to be starting to make those plans now. Yeah, as we know, this has been a very fluid situation. So um, things, things may change, and they are still figuring out a lot of those plans as well. Also, something for those in the lake area, Friday on the Green begins this Friday at Russell Crossroads. Um, you know, there it's possible to spread out, socially distance, um, enjoy some outdoor time, um, enjoy some nice music too. Kurt McKinney and Chuck Lofton are the featured artists this Friday. Yeah, and um, what is it? Um, Strand Sessions. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Strand Sessions also starts back next week in Strand Park. So, um, you know, it's another nice way everybody's been cooped up inside. You know, this is an opportunity to get outdoors um, and to really, you know, enjoy yourself, enjoy some some free few free music and also at a distance as well. We also want to get into some Elmore County news tonight. First, we are going to hear from our two news reporters. And lastly, we're going to end on sports um, from across the area. Um, so now we will hear from Carmen Rogers. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Carmen Rogers with Tallapoose Publishers. I'm here at City Hall, Tallahassee, Alabama, with Mayor Johnny Hammett. We got a lot of infrastructure work going on. So if we got time, I'd like to tell everybody out there what's going on. Absolutely. Um, I know there's a, a sidewalk project close to downtown over yeah. by James Street. Yeah, James Street. That'll be wrapping up hopefully this week. It depends on the rain. Um, mm -hmm. So we did uh, one block of sidewalks on each side. So they were working down there last week. And uh, they'll be wrapping that up hopefully this week. depends on the rain. Um, after that, um, we uh, had the bid opening for the Talaweka water tank um, to blast and paint it and remove that old tank beside it and the one on MacArthur Street. There's one that's out of service there. Uh, so right now this week, we've been meeting with engineers, James Garner and I have, and uh, what we're going to be doing is turning off some valves and probably take the water of the Burlington tank from 500,000 at capacity down to 250,000 gallons in that tank to lower the head pressure mm -hmm. in that. Um, so, because we're, we're going to reverse the hydraulic flow because we've got to bypass the Talawika tank. We're going to be running tests this week and next before we let that company come in to start working. We want to make sure we don't have any pressure issues anywhere. So, we're kind of changing things up. So, we're just doing that right now. Uh, probably starting the next day or two, start doing some tests on that to see. We don't want to okay, you guys start to work and turn it off and have the water running a different route and have all kind of problems. So we're going to be playing around this week on that. So uh, that ought to be fun. <laughs> yeah, and so we're going to do that and then hopefully get Tank Pros that won the bid in here to do that work. All right. Well, we appreciate the update. Thank you. Until next week, I'm Carmen Rogers reporting for Tallapoosa Publishers. Again, that was Carmen Rogers reporting from Tallahassee on the latest work throughout the city. So you make sure you can read more about that online and in this week's Tallahassee Tribune. Uh, glad to hear from, from her and from Tallahassee Mayor Johnny Hammock. Definitely. Lots of work going on over there in Tallahassee. Lots of projects. Next, we will hear from Daniel Dye over in Wetumpka, who will give us a look at something that lifted the spirits of residents of Gardens of Wetumpka earlier this week. This is Daniel Dye, senior reporter for the Wetumpka Herald. I'm here with Gardens of Wetumpka. Uh, we're getting ready to have a parade. We're in about the 10th or 11th week of uh, really no activity due to COVID-19. 
Uh, it's a network of uh, elderly healthcare professionals who have decided to bring some joy to the Wetumpka area for the residents of Gardens of Wetumpka. Thank you to Daniel Dye for providing that information for us. Obviously, we like to see anything that's sort of a feel-good story right now. We definitely need more of those. Definitely. Um, also, over in Wetumpka, rain and the coronavirus has not stopped a multi-million dollar project going on in Wetumpka that many are excited about. Um, we will hear next from Caleb Turrentine, our sports writer in Wetumpka, as he gives an update on the Wetumpka Stadium project. Over the past two months, the sports world has come to a screeching halt due to the coronavirus. Uh, and even before the global pandemic hit, we saw spring sports season get hit by a ton of rain. Uh, there was a bunch of canceled games and even uh, other plans were, were having to adjust because of it. Uh, with the Wetumpka Stadium project, had to deal with 19 days of rain in their first month after breaking ground. Uh, fortunately, they have worked around those issues with the weather and also the coronavirus and are making sure the stadium is going to be ready for the 2020 football season. Yeah, we're on schedule. We're actually a little bit ahead of schedule, so we have a little bit of play because of the weather. Uh, everything's going to all start coming together. We're putting the roof on the, on the building down below uh, tomorrow, and then another week we'll have the other building done. So all five of the main buildings will be done. We're starting to tick a piece on Monday. Uh, now, after that, well, the painters all start tomorrow, so you start seeing it look like buildings. The Wetumpka community has been able to see most of the progress as they drive by on Highway 14 when they look down next to the Wetumpka Sports Complex. Uh, they've seen the concrete go in over the past few weeks. They also saw the field goal post go up. And over the next three or four weeks, they'll be able to see the bleachers start to surround uh, and, and the buildings start to be painted as it's starting to look more and more like a football stadium. It feels kind of good. We were everybody's entertainment for a while. Um, during the height of the coronavirus, we had uh, several elderly people parked on the side in individual cars just watching us for the day. <laughs> no movie theaters, nothing to do. Yeah. So, um, we're getting, so we're moving right along. I'm real pleased and the community would be happy we turned over to them on time. So, yeah. you know, and yeah. they can play football on the 16th of August. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to stay tuned with the Wetumpka Hero for more videos and photos from the new construction site as they continue to prepare for Wetumpka's home opener on August 28th against Tallahassee. I'm Caleb Turrentine reporting for Tallapoosa Publishers. Well, I'm definitely really excited to see that project coming together over in Wetumpka. And speaking of football, you know, obviously athletics are coming back. You know, the um, AHSA released last week that sports athletic activities could resume on Monday. Uh, that'll be the first time since March. So there are a lot of uh, social distancing guidelines that those teams have to follow, um, you know, being six feet apart, doing sanitation, doing checks before um, students are allowed to come, taking their temperatures, things like that. Um, but definitely excited. You know, the, the feeling is, is that coaches are excited to uh, get back out. Yeah, you know, we, we heard from all our Tri-County area football coaches and this week, you know, they ultimately said that, um, you know, they know that some of the guidelines are challenging, um, but ultimately they are just glad to be back on the field and it happened a lot sooner than they expected. Um, so they're all just overall excited and getting things ready to go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out in terms of what, um, you know, football is going to look like. The good news is, is that it, at this time, not a whole lot is being done in terms of putting teams uh, together in terms of teamwork. Um, so they're really focused on individuals conditioning. Uh, the important thing is getting those kids back acclimated to working out every day after being off for so long. It's going to be uh, certainly a challenge, but an exciting one. Yeah, definitely. And I know that people are happy just to see a little bit of sports coming back into the world. You know, sports are one of those things that are kind of constant and unite everybody. So I'm um, definitely glad to see them coming back in some regard. Um, so as always, we really want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you for coming back for our first show in about a week and a half that we've had. We will now have this once a week every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We appreciate y'all tuning in and we will see you next week. Again, I'm Santana Wood, Managing Editor alongside Lizzie Arbogast, Sports Editor. See you next week.